from you um, and getting an idea of your history. Tell us a little bit about you. We're doing, I understand you got an award for in 2018. You got a million people to do the Million Man March. No, the Woman March. The CDA uh, March. I'm Clean it up for me. <laughs> okay. In 2018, I won the first platinum award for 100 CDA candidates in a year as the first person of color. Okay. In Ohio. Okay. Okay. What is, I mean, what did that, what was a hundred, what, hundred what, what they get? Uh, well, is 100 we people did. getting CDAs or? Yeah, uh, 100 people received their CDAs. They didn't uh, break it down to um, nationality or gender or anything, okay. but it was 100 people in a year's time um, in 2018 that was able to receive their CDA through um, my uh, performance as a professional development specialist. Oh, professional development specialist. That is that what the PD st yes. specialist stands for? Perfect. Okay. How, I mean, how does that work? I'm I'm working with a group now um, that's working on their um, CDA. They've just began, so I wanted to talk with you. Um, a lot of it is overwhelming, as I tell them at the very beginning. It's a lot of stuff, and I was just want to talk with you to help simplify. Um, the The first thing that we I was trying to get an idea of the difference between we've got. Um, something called CS competency standards versus um, resources. If you could kind of maybe simplify the basic difference for this, since this week I had them, they were looking at RC4, which was getting family um, resources or things in their neighborhood. But let's just start there. Okay. Competency means you can do the job. Simplified, you can do the job. Are you competent? Do you have the materials you need? Are you able to seek the resources that you need in order to improve the quality of your children, your family, and yourself? Um, the competency goal standard statements, you will be meeting 13 functional areas. Okay, okay. In six, okay, in okay. six competency goal standard statements which means that you will be writing about what you do in each one of those functional areas. Is that like what you do in that in your classroom when you say what you yes. do? That, okay. Yes, what you do in the classroom as an early childhood professional. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And each competency goal standard meets a different, a different, it's 13 functional areas. Each competency goal standard statement meets a different one. Um, for mm -hmm. example, goal one meets three, health, safe, healthy learning environment. Okay. And then, you know, each goal has their own specific idea that you will write the competency goal standard statement. That is a written statement of your competence and how you do it and what you do. Okay, so if, for instance, you mentioned that safe and healthy learning environment, that means within their classroom, with the environment, like within the, what the within state, the what the state says about it, or what you do okay. as a professional based okay. on the standards, because we do have standards that we need to follow, and I don't okay. know how much they know about the standards, but there should be one in every center. Okay, okay. You mean the goal, the, the standards is like what you're trying to meet, what you're the, exactly. the kind of like the rules to follow for everything else, maybe? Exactly. Uh, based on the domains that they'll be learning about or that they're using already and just not familiar with the terminology. Oh, OK. OK. Like the, oftentimes we're doing okay. things and we really don't know what we're doing until we get the understanding and the meaning of what it is. Okay, like approaches to learning and cognitive development, and the, I, I had got to memorize them. I don't forgot them myself, but um, exactly. <laughs> social, emotional development, <laughs> language and literacy. Okay, yeah, okay. okay. Those, see, those things, there are specific standards that based uh, on early childhood education that the children need to meet in connection with the milestones, and the milestones is just an average of what the um, 
average child is supposed to be doing at a certain age. Oh, oh, okay, I get it. How many miles have they? What can they do at the? Okay, okay, I got okay, it. Okay, you have uh, you okay. have the infant toddler uh, stage, which mm -hmm. is the infants are zero to eight months. Mm -hmm. The mobile infant is nine to seventeen months, and the toddler is um, eighteen months to three years or thirty six months. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. And then you have the preschool that's milestones for them as well. Three, okay. fours, and fives. Okay. So milestone, you're saying that there's certain things like you should be able to, somebody said the other night, you crawl before you walk. I thought they were doing the old R&B song, but it has something to do with, <laughs> had something to do with earlier. The, 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 the stairs, scaffold, some, the term was scaffold, sca scaffolding. scaffold. Yeah, 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 yeah. Scaffolding. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's building on an existing skill and on and on. Okay, okay. And the milestones don't always happen like that. It basically oh, depends okay. upon the child. Okay. Their experiences, who is expanding on what they already know. Okay, okay. And what they okay. figure out on their own. Okay, okay, okay. Then, then okay, okay. Then I, I, I think I've got a bit. So when we look at the um, competency st um, standards um, that you just kind of touched on briefly. What's the difference in that kind when we talk about competency standards and the, um, I'm looking at, I'm picking with them, I'll pull up my book now. I got the yellow one now, the green was in the background, but okay. um, what's the difference when we talk about resources and the competency standards? Because the, they've got letters in the book and oftentimes we get confused. There's CS1, CS2, and then there's RC4 and RC. One, one student told me, texted me the other night and says, well, I don't know my Roman numerals very well. Can you help me understand? I'm like, you know what? Do I look uh, Roman? But that's all. No, that's okay, story. basically. Yeah. Well, the C stands for the competency goal standard statement. That's okay. the information for the statement. Okay. Whatever uh, functional area you're addressing. And the R is the resource that matches the competency oh. goal standard statement. Oh, it matches okay. um, my my issue with the competency goal standard statements and the resources is that oftentimes the area of study or the competency goal standard statement that you're working on or studying about the resource does not match. Okay. I prefer, <laughs> okay. Okay. I prefer whatever goal statement competency goal standard statement that you are working on, I prefer looking up those resources to match at the same time. And later on, when you go back, you'll already have that information there. Okay. But okay. Uh, the book says one thing, and I've learned over the years that um, even though we have the guide, if we mm -hmm. make the connection, it's easier for us to follow. Okay. Rather than running all over the place. Okay, so give me give me an example when when you when when you get I don't I don't want to put you on the spot off the, off. So for instance, the one that I was talking about the um, let me see let me find it here. Um, the one I was talking about the family resources guide. Um, and they were saying that name, contact information, um, community that provides resources and services for children a list of three or more websites and a brief description that provide. So these are the resources under, um, you know, family guide thing. What, how, how do we look at, how would you look at matching that one up? Just, just as a, for instance. Okay. Um, Matt matching that. When you, one up when you mention, you know, or it's one that you, one that you, since you went and got your book, I was looking down trying to read mine. <laughs> since you went okay. got your, <laughs> give me case. one. I mean, Connect the dots for me on one of them. It doesn't matter which one because we got to okay, go through all of uh, them. Well, safe, healthy learning environment. Okay. You are discussing what you actually do for a safe, healthy learning environment. Right. Okay. Right. right. Uh, what they're looking for in that particular resource, they would be looking for your uh, first aid and uh, CPR 
knowing that you know how to take care of a child in the event that there is an emergency, okay. that you know how to fill out the medication form. So that would be the resource, one of the resources for that one. Okay. 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 If you're working on that, get that. Make sure you have it. You do need the original in your book. Now, once you uh, had your CDA, received it, then you can take it out and do whatever. Most people give it to their director. I advise you to give your director a copy unless they pay for it. But (laughs) that's another story. Okay. (laughs) Healthy, uh, when you're talking about uh, healthy, what you do for a child, healthy, they're talking about, uh, they want the menu as a resource, the menu that they use for whatever age group that you're working with. At oh, that like McDonald's, time. what's over the count, what's up? Uh, no, oh. the menu based on USDA or oh. the menu. <laughs> oh, that's different, sorry. <laughs> yes, or the menu that your center uses. Oh, okay, okay. Because okay. with that, along with that resource, you're going to have to say your likes or dislikes. Oh, Either you okay. like the, the menu um, or you don't like the menu and whatever you would change. Okay. So that is the resource for that one. Okay. Then, um, then when you go to the learning environment, what you do, you'll be talking about your lesson plan. You'll have okay. a lesson plan of uh, step ups. So everybody is doing a different lesson plan. Okay. Whatever lesson plan you are doing for your center, be sure oh, that okay. you have that. Now, those are the three resources for safe, healthy learning environment. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. That, then that, okay. That makes now, now. I can see, said Stevie Wonder. Um, the yes. point, the question, the, the um, <laughs> Let me ask you the one of the biggest problems that I found that a lot of um, of our of candidates um, down through the years and in early childhood, um, because people often get into it for the love of children, don't often bring the um, technical skills, the, the 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 you know maybe high school diploma or um, oftentimes if you you know high school diploma or any college or any education did not necessarily prepare them for the nature of writing in this writing in these competency standards um and how to really approach them so they get frustrated they have it in their head um they have an idea of what but to actually do it so what do you recommend i know you um you wear many hats i understand you used to you were doing showing people how to write things down or explaining how to write, what to say, or how to, you know, so what can you share with that? Um, Again, um, well, I didn't mention it before, but it is a must Mm -hmm. for you to get your endorsement book. Uh, Your endorsement is either the yellow book, which is infant toddler, the Mm -hmm. green book, which is preschool, or the blue book, which is family daycare, and uh, another department is actually doing family de- uh, family daycare. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. With this book, it tells you exactly what you need as okay. you go as you go through your book. Say, for instance, excuse me a minute. Let me put my glasses on. As you go through this book, mm-hmm. we're doing a safe, healthy learning environment. Okay. What page okay. is that on? I'll go, I'll do it with you. You in the green or the yellow book? Um, I'm in the green. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. As you go through your book, it gives you an example to establish and maintain a safe, healthy learning environment. Right. I see there that. Is, okay. There is some examples there of what they're actually looking for. If you have your book, you can turn the page and there are some examples there. Gotcha, gotcha. There are some examples. Materials, equipment, environment are safe. Indoor, outdoor play areas are in good repair. Free of debris, structural hazard. Okay, before I take my children to the playground, I go out, I sweep the yard, I. Make sure that all the material is working. We're not going to write this exactly like it's in the book verbatim, 
But right. these are the things that we're already doing. So you have some samples here. Uh -huh. And when you begin to write, you I provide or I prepare a safe, healthy learning environment for my children because I get to work early and I clean up my room and I put my supplies out for the day. Okay. 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 So, okay. I mean, that's that's just uh, an, an example of the information that they're looking for. And it's I, it's, it's more of an I, what I, I, I do. Always okay. I, but it's never uh, I will when you're writing about the statements that there are times that you might say I will. I will receive my CDA credential as soon as my training is over and I finish my professional portfolio. Okay. And I have. <laughs> okay. So, okay. but other other than that, you're writing in the present. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. okay. That is excellent. That's great because I, like I said those are the you know just a few questions I, you you kind of answered what I the the biggest the biggest challenges as as we're, we're going into it. One one big question that came up the other night you might be able to clear up because the students because there's so much information but they have a setup so that we could step through it systematically. But some people who were doing preschool felt that it was getting on their nerves to have to suffer through learning about infant toddlers. And the infant toddler is like, well, I ain't gonna be working with three. So, so but the information is combined and I couldn't help, help them. They couldn't gain clarity. Why do I need to go through the, all of it if I'm only gonna set, or if I'm only gonna get my CDA in one or the other? So could you maybe okay. talk to that? First of all, you may be working with all types of children. And we are uh, incorporating children with special needs. Right, so you may right. need some info. You may have a three-year-old that you need some information about what the 22-month-old does. So okay. this will get, be a guide for you to go back and match it with an activity that will increase the child's development up to the age. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And that, that well that that makes perfect sense. Well, that's all I need. To, that's all I need to bug you about. I just like I said, I wanted to get a good grip on um, the resources and the the um, competency statements and getting the separation because um, each time we get a different group. And this year, you know, as you know, we're doing the the we're doing COVID a lot of learning online. So hearing from as many different people, and especially um, experts in the field, um, are good. Well, you, I mean, you frown, but I mean, you're, if you've been able to get 100 people through CDA, you've been able to at least walk them through and help give them more or less some shortcuts. And we're at the, like I said, we're just, you know, a couple of months in, which means people can at least begin to, I keep telling them that, that relax, it's not that, it's not that complicated. My advice has been, if you're in the classroom, and you can kind of help me clean this up. If you're in the classroom every day with the children, you start observing them. So as this these things come up that you have to write about, you're now, I just tell them now, go to class with the eye for observation. You know, watch what they're doing and then see, oh, they are doing their six months. They are doing this. They're supposed to be doing this. They're six months. They're eight months. You know, um, you know, I have one four years old. He's still not potty trained. You know, maybe where is that in the book? You know, those, you know, trying to if you're monitoring your kids, you can see the development, the mental development, the gross motor, the the approaches to you can see all this stuff. Um, so I don't know. But, but would you say that's a good good way to advise them uh yes as well as learning things about infants and toddlers okay so that you can so that you have information to bring to the table okay so okay. you bring you're reading it well that's what i'm saying you're reading it and you're experiencing it so that when you're writing it it's not you know it's not so scary you know exactly. you um do so and, your, and, and again you have your examples in your own words. Right. So are and we, the big, the last argument is, do I, can I handwrite this or do I need to type it? I'm always saying type it. We got, you know, have too many, we're doing stuff online with computers and everything. So I don't know about handwriting anymore, but what's your take on, cause you're a PD specialist, which means you, oh, you will close with you explaining what that's about too, but continue. Okay. Tell me about the writing. Um, if your handwriting is legible, 
It will look professional. That rules me out. Okay. <laughs> they are not looking for the doctor's signature. Okay. You cannot read that. <laughs> if your letters are formed in a way that it can be legible means I can read it. Not necessarily I, but legible means that I can read it when I look at it. Okay. Make sure if you're writing, you're using blue and black ink. Okay. Red, pink, and purple is not a professional okay. um, way to put a paper together. Okay. But you may, and it would be wise to ask somebody to do your reading or to okay. look at your handwriting before you begin. Okay. Okay. Or your printing as well. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And finally, the last, the last question. Um, could you um, kind of just maybe briefly give me this overview of the that that final walk of the um, see, when you you go in? What are, what are we looking for as PD specialists? What I mean, the it comes up. I'm understand. You know, it comes up at the end. You've taken all your coursework. You've put that portfolio together. Now you have to find a PD specialist, um, and that's done. I know through the Council of um, Professional Recognition website. When they come out, what what should you know? What are, what are what does the candidate now need to be aware of? How do they prepare for that visit? Okay, first of all, your director needs to be aware of what you're doing. That's the <clears throat> that's the first thing, and what what their expectations are of you as far as receiving the CDA. That's the first thing, okay. and that is a commitment to professionalism. Okay. Okay. The PD specialist is there for four hours. The mm. first hour, it used to be eight. Oh, the okay. First... <laughs> we'll consider ourselves lucky, all right. Right, yes, we do. <laughs> the first hour, the PD specialist will review your portfolio in a private, quiet place, alone. The next two hours, the uh, PD specialist will be in the classroom documenting what you're doing with your children. Okay. Taking notes. Uh, some of them, um, they might go through the book and look and check off and things like that. Most of us, we take notes. Okay. We, when we're reviewing your portfolio, we'll pull out your scoring tool. That's and something in the book, that, right? Yes, it That's is. In the back of the you, book. Okay. You need the book. Okay. Buy the book. <laughs> need the book. You need it. So <laughs> they will pull out that part of the book, the scoring tool. Also, your parent questionnaires are in the book. Okay. The uh, dividers for your professional portfolio is in the book already. Those things you don't have to type up. Okay. Okay. After the two hours um, of observation, you and the PD specialist have a one-on-one -on -one reflection time. Um, your classroom must be covered. It must be covered because you do need to be away and have that private one-on-one -on -one time. That reflection time is not a correction time. Actually, it is a time to reflect on what was seen, what was done. Uh, might be some tip, maybe some tips on how you can uh, improve and definitely to let you know what you have. Okay. Not to say, oh, you spelled that wrong. Oh, you didn't do that right. Um, gently offer some information about a different way to do some things, maybe. But it's not a time for um, correction time. Okay. That's not what the PD specialist is there for. Okay. Now, um, it has been times where we've had to switch things around. Um, the person may come in early, maybe uh, six or something like that, and they get a PD specialist that'll come that time. Well, that's the time that they might be doing their circle time depending on their schedule and the length of time that they're there, okay? We may come in and observe at that particular time and then go to the portfolio review. 
but we cannot switch the time of the reflection because we need to see your portfolio and we need to see your performance in order to have that reflection time. And that's the time also to clear up any questions um, that the PD specialist might have. Uh, people use different languages. And often we may read something and we don't understand. So this gives you the opportunity to clear up anything at that particular time. Okay. Okay. And that is um, what the PD specialist does. Sometimes um, they, uh, we talk to you about TEACH or we talk to you about the Ohio program um, or uh, taking your test, not being nervous, read 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 okay mm -hmm. so the more the more knowledge because oftentimes i mean um when we were in the classroom earlier this year the concern was what's on the test i like i feel like i'm back in school what's going to be on the test what's going to be on the test and i'm like you're just going to have to be comfortable with getting the knowledge, kind of focus on what you gain in class observe um in your classroom and um, you really won't have to worry about what's on the test because you'll be comfortable enough to um, kind of go through it. it. Okay. Every day, every day practice. Okay. Um, watch for a play on words. If it, if you read it and it's rough and it's not making sense, then that's not the answer. Okay. It is multiple <laughs> choice. You do have, you do have uh, 120 minutes which is two hours to take your test. If you have a special need, you will need to um, petition to the console for uh, additional time. And uh, they need some documentation that you do have a, indeed have a learning disability or mm -hmm. a medical disability where you might need more time for testing. But you do have to petition to the console and it would be wise to do it as early in the application as possible so that you'll have everything together. Okay. Well, great. I mean, I really, I can't thank you enough for for, for your time this afternoon as, as you're sitting on the Frisco Bay. I hope Otis Redding wasn't out there. I haven't, <laughs> it brings to mind that song, sitting on the dock of the bay, watching the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm going for a swim shortly. <laughs> hey, for the Frisco Bay. Okay. Well, no, thank you so much. Um, we will be bugging you if we, you know, as, as we go along. I just wanted to, um, I wanted to begin to have some. I needed a, an expert. Be, usually, I can drag somebody into the classroom or somebody's around, yeah. but now they're just kind of stuck with who's ever presenting. Um, you know, each cycle, so we don't have that luxury of, you know you know, yes, different somebody. perspectives. And I, it's important um, for me, it's important because it, I'm still, I'm always learning and everything exactly. has changed. Um, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, like, like I said, you've been, um, I know working with your um, grandson, is it? What is he, was yes. he, is he walking yet? Is he, well, how, how old is he now? Three and a half year old, walking, talking, and can use a muzzle. So, okay. <laughs> and you've been able to see, quote unquote, the stages of development. Again. Yes, okay. <laughs> uh, I did. I did. I'm still blown back by yesterday, uh, Monday, when he asked me for the instruction manual, and I looked uh, at him. I, I said, "Beg your pardon, I need the instruction manual for my eagle." So I said, uh, "Okay," and I just handed it to him, and I just looked at him, and he was looking at the instruction manual. Okay. I don't remember saying that word to him. Okay. So, you know, and be mindful. Talk to your children. If you use those big words, tell them what it is. Yeah. Some of yeah. us learn as the children learn. Well, yeah. I, learn, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. learn when I go out to the centers and see these wonderful things that you scholars are doing with those children. Don't stop and get as much knowledge as you can to um, prepare yourself for what's to come. Very good. With yes. that, I thank you very much. And thank you for asking me. And if I could be of any help at any time, just let me know. Okay. All righty. Have a great day. Thank you. <laughs>